and you're generating speed, getting more velocity. But when you're doing aerials, you've got to... Welcome to the Surf Mastery Podcast. We interview the world's best surfers and the people behind them to provide you with education and inspiration to surf better. A lot of people think that they're on a big wave, so they drop down straight and they miss the section. Today I'm interviewing Matt Granger. Matt is an ex-pro surfer, a New South Wales state champion in 1991. Matt is still a sponsored free surfer in his 40s. Uh, Matt is a big wave charger, as you'll see by the, the photo I put up. Matt is also an elite level surf coach. He's currently the New South Wales junior team coach. Matt is also the owner and director of Manly Surf School, one of Australia's largest surf schools and also the High Performance Surf Centre in Sydney, which is a gym set up to train surfers. This is a great interview. There's lots of insights to improve your own surfing. Enjoy. (laughs) 1991, New South Wales state champion. Yeah. And how old were you then? I was probably 20, 20 years old. I think, yeah, I got in the finals of the Australian titles competed in pro juniors and then basically became a free surfer <laughs> sponsored free surfer while i was at university so it was cool got to surf good waves and get paid to get barreled when was the first competition you entered yeah first comp was when i was 10 years old and it was called the moving on 80 in 1980 and it was at manly beach and where i entered into the foamy division and the shortboard division it was pretty cool sponsored by move chocolate milk well, me and my two brothers went in it. Yeah, it was awesome. And then from there, pretty much competed in all the Manly Ringer titles, state titles, Australian titles, pro juniors, and some QSs until I realized, yeah, I'd become a free surfer and went to university and studied sports management. Is there anything that stands out for you that took your surfing from just sort of an okay surfer who likes to have fun to that next level faster surfer? who has the ability to compete? Yeah, pretty much starting to do competition helped a lot. So surfing against better surfers, that was huge. And I started training with coaches as well. Derek Hine did some coaching. Derek Hine, Derek Hine coached me and my brothers and also Terry Day. So started we doing boxing training and fitness training. And Terry Day at the time was training Damien Harbin for his world titles. Yeah. So being in that mix with um, you know, Brett Warner, Matt Cattle, and a lot of Garth Dickinson being with a lot of surfers and Terry Day was working with the O'Neill team at the time with um, Brad Gerlach and Luke Egan. So it was good having that guy, that coach, who was actually helping us out with our fitness and our surfing. So it was about that. That was a change. Rather than just being a surfer, we started to be athletes and training for, for comps and training for waves, yeah. So surfing with better surfers... Yeah. So even so, for the general surfer, it can even just be going to a, a better a better surf break and surfing. Yeah, with. watching other people surf too, they lift your level. Yeah. Seeing so, and watching, you know, a lot of people don't understand, but you need to looking at other people how they surf. Like I was in Macaroni's recently with Dane Reynolds, and he watches other people, and he's one of the best in the world. And that's how he gets better. He watches YouTube clips of his favorite surfer, and I thought that's oh, that's pretty cool. And he learns from them how to do. A, I said, how do you do a backhand whip? And he goes. Oh, I've got this guy from San Clemente that I study, and that's he's got the best backhand whip, so I'm, I copy him. Yep. So it's like mimicking the other surfer. And I used to watch heaps and heaps of Oki's footage, um, Jack McCoy movies like Green Iguana, and just go through that and watch how Oki did his cardies and his bottom turns. And and then having someone film you as well, had Terry Day filming us, so you could actually watch the footage and then look where your hands are, you, your eyes, you know, your knee placement, foot placement, all those sorts of things. Yeah, so surfing with better surfers, watching better surfers, and uh, surf coaching. Surf coaching, yeah. Surf coaching's so um, underutilized, would you agree? For sure. Like You look at all the sports, all the way to golf and tennis, everyone's been coached from a young age, even up to a, an older age. Like this guys still have golf coaches when they're 60 years old, yeah. whereas surfers, it was laughable back in the 80s if you had a coach. It was yeah. like... Well, um, we started lucky. I was in a team, but we had a team of guys, probably twenty of us, all training together in sort of late eighties, early nineties. Yeah, that was the new thing. Was like unheard of. And now you look on the tour, there's coaches everywhere, and the lift, the levels just gone so high. I think from that, but you know, you see the tour now, every heat's unbelievable. 
<laughs> there's no easy heats anymore. Everyone's their boards are perfect, their bodies are perfect. They're tuning there all the time with their technique with their coaches. So it's a massive thing, yeah. Just being having no stone unturned. Yeah, and and that surf coaching you went through as a surfer, did that inspire you to become a surf coach as well? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I um, and I find a lot of people that coach with me who have been coached, they understand how to break down a skill, and it's all about pretty much knowing how to break down a skill. So you've been taught that from a coach. It's easy to relay that in the future when you become a coach. What's the biggest mistake you see uh, beginner surfers make? Um, beginner surfers, probably their paddling posture. They don't lift up their shoulders high enough. They're not arching the lower back. They probably don't have those muscles at the time as well. If legs too far apart. Paddling technique, timing. But it's like anything. You do something 100 times, you get okay. You do something 1,000 times, you get good at it. You do it 10,000 times, you become a master. So it's all about reps doing reps and reps and reps and surfing is one of the hardest sports in the world as you know <laughs> you just got to do a lot of hours in the water and and train you know training smart as well doing exercises in the gym that are relevant to surfing you know not the old school way we used to train too was pretty we used to train like strength trainers like did for footy we're doing bench press and bicep curls and <laughs> things that sort of they get make you look good but not really helping you on a wave whereas now all the, all the movements we do at the high performance center with yourself you know, we're mimicking ideas, you know, we're mimicking movements uh, in the gym that we do on the wave and when we paddle and when we pop up. So, you know, one, you've got good paddling strength, paddling speed, your pop-up's fast, so you get into the wave early and then you can go into your turns and your, your ankles are mobile, your knees are mobile, your hips are mobile and your whole upper body and you've got a strong core. So doing stuff like any other sportsman would do if you're a gymnast gymnasts train that way they do they mimic the exercises and that's what we're doing the high performance surf center at sydney with yourself yeah like martial artists as well martial artists yeah dancers and yeah just replicate doing movements reps 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 and having the skate ramps awesome you know like for the kids some of them are doing airs now and air reverses because they're doing it in the ramp because if you get a wave you go for a surf it's pretty hard to get that section where it's perfect for an air reverse but on a skate ramp it's there all day and you can, as I talked about before, doing something a thousand times, you can do it, do it, do it, do it, and try it. And then one day that section comes on the wave and you go, bang, I've done this a thousand times in the ramp and it, and it works. And you go, oh, wow, I just did it. How, how'd I do that? <laughs> but it's like muscle memory, like training, training the brain as well. And, and even when you were a younger surfer and you were just doing like old school bodybuilding exercises, you still, even just from those mundane exercises, you still notice the difference in your surfing. Definitely, yeah. Um, just especially the so I mean, when we the leg power stuff like the leg press, I found really important, um, and squats, that was awesome. So that looking back, that were probably the best exercises we did, and obviously the stretching, so less injuries, and the boxing. We did a lot of boxing. Boxing was real good because you're getting a hand-eye coordination. So you know, you're doing left, right, hook, uppercut. So you got to do something fast and using same as on a wave. You go along a wave. There's a lip. Oh, I got to bo- go down and do a floater. You know, on in a cutty. So when the boxing coach is just throwing um, random things at you, you've got to decide fast, same as on a wave. So that helped. And also helped with your, um, the boxing helped with paddling, paddling speed. So, you know, when you've got to catch a wave and do real fast, similar to like punching out five quick jabs. So, yeah, it's good. And it's, I think it's a mental thing too. When you train, you, you mentally feel stronger when you're in a heat against someone thinking, well, I've trained, I, you know, I'm, I'm mentally tough. I'm going to beat this guy. I mean, it doesn't always work, but it's a way better attitude than being lazy when you go in hungry like a fighter, that you're going to go hard, and you go hard for those 20 minutes, and you're not going to back down. Uh, I think training's helpful for most people, yeah. 95%. <laughs> oh, for sure. I mean, we all dream of surfing, you know, four to six foot at our favorite break, but in reality, we only really end up surfing two to three foot slop most of the time. Yeah. And then when it comes, when it is actually four to six foot, we kind of feel weak. Yeah. But if you're in the gym keeping really strong, then your body's ready for that bottom turn on that six foot wave. Definitely. Well, look, went to Macaroni's this year and with a bunch of guys. And I train three times a week with yourself. And Macaroni's is you take off, you get a tube, and then you do about five turns. And I found... I could actually, rather than my last turn being the worst, it could actually be my best, like, because I was fit. I did a lot of leg power stuff with yourself, and 
you rather, you know, like you're doing your first turn, second turn, third turn, fourth turn, still still strong, you know, whereas if I didn't train in the gym, you know, you might bog a rail in that last turn because you're not, your muscle's not ready and you get tired, fatigued. And I know, you know, a lot of guys at, at Bells Beach, you know, you see the guys get a lot of leg burns and, and Jeffries and places like that. They've got to do a lot of leg training. They'll mix up their training for the event. Um, I know Mick Fanning and guys like that will train change their training for the wave because they know you know you've got to be you know do six turns and they've got to be all perfect whereas if you've got no leg power leg strength or endurance you fall apart and you lose the heat for people like off the street like us just want to go surf and have fun like you said you go and surf i went to macaroni's and surf 96 hours in two weeks um some days eight hours a day you know two four hour sessions um have a rest in between eat good foods one day i did like seven hours straight but i ate bananas and drank water <laughs> and i felt perfect you know and make sure i went to bed early still had a couple of beers every night went to bed and yeah. still got my eight hours sleep and uh yeah felt good and then that's what a, a lot of the guys who trained weren't falling apart and a lot of the guys who didn't train you know come day day seven day eight you know they've done a they've done a, a groin injury done a hammy their shoulders are burnt out so it does make sense if you're going to go on a surf trip to train and if you want to surf to be an old older person like i'm 46 i still get to surf twice a day and i'm yeah. no no injuries you know and i can go out if i've got as talking about before if i've got 30 minutes of time to surf i just won't check it put my wetty on get out there still get 10 waves and come in happy rather than not surfing and knowing I can paddle out fast, get waves quick and, you know, not fall off and, yeah, it's, and you're a lot happier. You're not grumpy. <laughs> Being a happy surfer, not a grumpy surfer. Yeah. And when your surfing's progressing, it's also more fun and yeah, everything else in your life tends to progress as well when your surfing is progressing. So. When you're happy. Yeah. Because yeah, that's what we all love. We love to surf and if you... You come in from a bad session, you feel kind of grumpy, but if you come in from a good session and you have more good sessions than bad, you're generally a lot happier. You know, you start getting more in tune on your boards, on your equipment. You know, it's fun. I'm hanging out with the grommets and, you know, we're still trying, I'm still trying aerials <laughs> and I'm 46 because I'm, my hips are mobile, my ankles are mobile. And some of my mates are going, what are you doing that for? You're going to hurt yourself. I'm like, well, no, no, it's all right because I'm practicing it, knowing the land, skating, all that stuff. And I'm um, trying to, keep the the brain young too <laughs> yeah oh, it's, it's inspirational i mean th those of you that haven't seen matt surf i mean he rips un undoubtedly so it's uh it's inspirational he, even older than kelly slater yeah still still out there surfing a few times a day and yeah looked up to you know guys obviously like tom carroll he introduced fitness to surfing who's pretty much the first guy to be to do to train for fitness and to help his surfing and he's still you look at him he trains sometimes twice a day and surfs twice a day, and he's amazing. He's just a, a massive role model. And guys like Nathan Hedge as well, like trying to do the tour now, back on the tour, 36 years of age. He's actually his body's better now than when he was 25. You know, he's got muscles popping out everywhere. He's more agile. He's got a better diet. And you look at the guys on tour now, same as them. They're like more athletic than they were years ago. Not Not much, but, you know, they've just... They're tweaking their, they're doing, yeah, you look what guys are doing on the wave now, like backflips and who would have thought? Yeah. <laughs> Kelly Slater doing 540s and who would have thought of that? A guy over 40 years old can do a 540. Wow. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. And he even said in an interview recently that he wants to be surfing better when he's 50 than he's surfing now. So, I mean, that's what keeps him alive and progressing, isn't it? That yeah. that hunger just to get better and all the time as a surfer and... I notice myself when I'm getting better as a surfer, um, it's just life is just better. That's crazy. Everything Pe in life People is are getting better. better as they get older. Whereas years ago, you were tired at 30 on the tour or even before, yeah. But the diet, everyone's diet was pretty poor. Everyone's um, training regime wasn't up, you know, nothing to what we do now. The boards are better now. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Pretty good time actually in surfing. It is. In, with the Masters heat at um, Trestles. That was Sean Thompson. Amazing. He's over 60. Yeah. He looked like a grommet. Um, Michael Ho, Simon Anderson, all those guys. Yeah, Rabbit. That was cool. Cool to watch. Inspiring. So 
Hope I'm doing that at 60. Yeah, well, you still see Simon out every day. Simon's tearing, so. tearing out Northy. Tom Kersop, he's over 80. He's out there. He's over 80 years old. And he's out Northy with his helmet on, charging. It's cool. He's supposed to be in a, you know, people, it's all in their mind, isn't it? As they get older, they think, oh, they've got to be put in these boxes that, okay, you can't surf anymore because you're 70 or this or that. It's all in the mind and keep the body moving. I want to still be on a short board when I'm 70. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Why not? Back to the, the, the coaching side of things. What do you think is the most common mistake with you that you see with the intermediate or experienced sort of self-taught surfers? Yeah, a lot of people um, don't surf in the top third of the wave at the start of the wave. So a lot of people think that they're on a big wave, so they drop down straight and they miss the section. So a lot of intermediate surfers... One is their paddle on's not up to scratch, so you need to paddle more on the wave as you take off to get that fast entry. They need to pop up quick, get your speed fast, and then go into your turns. When you're surfing over six foot waves, it's different, or four foot waves when it's power. But when there's no power, you've got to create a lot of power yourself from your arms, from your paddle on. So paddle on hard on the angle, get to your feet, pump rail to rail, and then go into your turns. Whereas a lot of people um, just think, you know, do two paddles, pop up and they fall off or go off the back of the wave. Whereas you watch some of the pros, you know, they, sometimes they'll do sometimes six to eight paddles to get on the wave. People don't understand that. People actually, when they get to the intermediate level, they forget about paddling. They think, oh, yeah, that's for beginners. Don't need to worry about that anymore. Whereas all the top pros are all amazing paddlers. And being on the, going on the tour with Nathan Hedge and watching guys at Chopu last year when it was 12 foot, all the good paddlers were getting good rides, like, 10-point rides, 9-point rides, the, the guys that weren't as good as paddling were going over the falls because it's such a heavy wave. And, you know, you see the guys out snapper, they paddle past you. The good, you know, the amazing surfers, you see it's a, they just motor past you. Like even John John, the guy you wouldn't even think of, he's an amazing paddler. Um, yeah, Slater's an amazing paddler. So that's probably the key for intermediates to really work on their paddling and their pop-up and generating speed because speed's your, speed's your friend when you're you want to beat that section, that first section, especially in Sydney, where the waves are so quick and fast. You've got to have a quick reaction time, either with your paddle on, pop up, speed, and then you have fun. <laughs> Whereas on people up, up the Gold Coast or Point Breaks, north mid north coast, they've got to be a bit more of a luxury where they can get up and read the wave. Whereas in Sydney, we sometimes we only get two second rides, six second rides, sometimes the ten seconds. Of, you know, whereas on Snapper Rocks, you can go for half a kilometer <laughs> yeah so I'll, pu I'll put a link into the show notes for a, a video um where a gentleman who's a, a paddling and swim coach analyzes kelly slater paddling yeah for, for those that are interested to learn more i think it is that's a really it's good a video good, yeah it's a really good video it kind of analyzes the, the the way a surfboard sits in the water and the way you should paddle in, in quite a lot of detail i think that helps a lot um but i guess general advice would just paddle hard Really, isn't it? Yeah, Just get the pedal like you mean it. Get the shoulders up high. Um, Chris Davidson, he's an ex-pro surfer from Narrabeen. He used to he used to work for us, and he used to call it proud paddling. So you look proud. So you're up, your chest is high. You know, you got your shoulders up high, and you. Whereas when you're like a jellyfish, you're like sloppy. <laughs> you know, body down, bad posture. You're gonna you're gonna struggle. You're yeah. not gonna get that leverage. It's all about leverage and and getting that that talk through the water yeah and when you when you're proud paddling you can set up the board a little bit more as well yeah and have more control over the the way the board sits yeah, in the you water can, you can push in you know you can even be a little bit further forward too on your board to stop that nose dive because yeah. you're lifting up the shoulders and yeah a lot of people yeah they forget about paddling once they get good <laughs> No, I mean, I recently had uh, some surf coaching done by one of, one of Matt's um, protégés and Wow, it's just uh, my surfing has gone to the next level just from one, just from one coaching session. You yeah, know, it's just, amazing. Yeah, just getting some advice from an experienced coach and al and also allowing to you get to watch yourself as well because they're filming as well and uh, the way you approach the wave and and where you pop up and just that little detail of oh, it's amazing. Going yeah. going from paddling to popping up that that instant that little window that that's huge. If you can speed that up and and make it smoother and it will change the way you surf. Yeah, if you're riding, you know, you go over to seas and you're riding tubes, you know, places like Greenbush and Macaronis or Chopu, you've got to have that 
fast paddle on, pop up, bang, get into the tube quick. And um, if you can mimic that and get that movement on land, it's it's way easier in the surf. And you know you're going to get smashed a few times, but it, it's fun. Yep. And you just got to just try and trust yourself and go for it. And that's how I learned how to bow ride, just getting smashed, just yep. pulling a closeout after closeout after closeout. And you know, then eventually you learn how to get the line. And and you know when you got a good day, you come out. <laughs> yeah. But it's mu your same thing, muscle memory. You got to practice. And people are like, what are you pulling the closeouts for? I say, well, it's the only way to learn how to bow ride. Make sure you put your hands over your head afterwards <laughs> so you don't get bored in the head. But um. Yeah, that's what we do with the coaching, with our advanced coaching and intermediate coaching. It's a lot of video and a lot of technique. So people go out, they get three waves. We video them, come in, show them what they've got to work on, go back out, get two to three waves, come in. That's a, tec that's a technique session. And you just see the kids and even have had intermediate adults as well, just their, their technique skyrockets because you're just breaking down bad, ha bad habits and they didn't know that they had. You know, a lot of people don't get low enough on their bottom turn, like their body position. They don't crouch enough. So they're just, you got to get compression extension to create speed. So a lot of people don't um, understand that until they see it on a video or they see themselves and go, oh, wow, I didn't know I surfed that bad. Or <laughs> I didn't think I'd, oh, I need, yeah, I need to get way lower. So, yeah, knowing what you're talking about before, your pop up, your entry. Your bottom turn. So your bottom turn's massive. A lot of people don't really put enough em emphasis on the bottom hand turn. And we focus a lot on the bottom hand turn because that's your building block for a wave. Because um, you know, everyone's thinking about the re-entry and the aerial or the floater. But you've got to have that bottom turn perfect yeah. to help that out. So for example, for a v if you want to do a vertical turn, you've got to get speed in the top third of the wave. And then you've got to drop down, do a check turn and go right to the bottom to get that square, re that vertical re-entry. But when you're doing aerials, you've got to pump and you do a shallow bottom turn. You just do a bottom turn in the third of the wave and then pop to do that ollie. So knowing which bottom turn to do for what manoeuvre is important as well. well there's a lot to it. <laughs> yeah, then you've got roundhouse cutbacks, you've got floaters, you've got airs, and now you've got air reverses, alley-oops. You've got, oh, it's amazing. So many turns out there now to, to focus on. But... For the uh, intermediate, they should just focus on the basics first and yeah. get that right, and then they can go on to aerials. A lot of ki kids are going to the air a bit too early, so they don't have a good bro bottom turn or bad technique. So sometimes we have to pull our guys back a bit uh, in our elite programs just to get everything perfect, and then they can build from there. So paddling, which I already uh, have linked, uh, mentioned a link in the show notes to for a video, and then also the pop-up, I'm going to put a, a link to a video on, on pop-ups so you can train your pop-up on, on dry land, which will help your surfing a lot. Yeah. Uh, and also, do you think maybe that, because when you're watching surfing videos, usually it's in that four to six foot waves where the good surfers get that perfect drop in and they go straight to the bottom, yeah. to a beautiful bottom turn. And then we go out into our two foot sloppy waves on our fatter boards and we try and mimic that. And yeah. that's kind of where we go wrong. We don't tend to drive speed out of a bottom turn on a small wave. Exactly. Probably the best way is to look at um, the QS comps. <laughs> Probably look at the QS comps. If the WCT, they have waiting periods. They're in the best waves. They're in big waves. They're powerful waves. So it's... For us, we don't, you know, we don't fly around the world. They're, they're flying around the world to the best locations and got a waiting period for the best day. So it's awesome to see their technique. Their technique is impeccable, all those surfers in that level. But yeah, well, probably what you did said is is really true. But look, try and YouTube some QS events where they're in crappy waves because in the QS, sometimes there's uh, 200 surfers there or 100 surfers, and they basically put them out there from sun, sunrise to sundown, and they've got to surf any tide, any swell. And it was that the one at Portugal recently was pretty cool to watch. It was a pretty small waves, and it was good to see how much speed those guys would generate in those small waves. Yeah, so yeah, try to look at videos or stuff of crappy waves. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and really look at the details of the better surfers at your local break. Yeah, and watch what, what they yeah, do. Yeah, a lot of guys don't emphasize when you're paddling out. Look at what that guy's doing on the wave. You know, a lot of people are like looking at the sky or something. You should be paddling out, looking at that. Look at the best guy on the beach and what he does every day, or the best girl, and what or the top top ten guys at the beach, what they do. You'll learn heaps. Even the you know the 
They've got some of the guys like even Fraser Devell, you know, what I trained from Avalon. You've seen him at Avalon, like Little Av, just how he gets barreled. He's amazing. Harley Ross, another guy we trained from Curl Curl. He can just link turns together on, on the crappiest waves. And in big waves, he's mental as well. But he's really good at generating speed through dead sections and just bouncing off every bit of chop and white water. Yeah, so pretty good inspirational stuff. So that's one thing I've noticed in watching the, the better surfers. Like you said, what that the first thing they do. So we've already talked about the ability to paddle into the wave and to pop up fast. Yeah. But you're right. They don't go to the bottom straight away. The first thing they do is they kind of lift their arms up and they do like a little drive yeah. half, halfway up the wave. And then that puts them, boom, straight into into speed. And then if they need to, they can go down to the bottom. Yeah, exactly. It's what we call sometimes in coaching lift. So they're creating lift. By lifting their arms, they're taking the weight off the board. So it's lifting up. So you're generating speed, getting more velocity. And um, yeah, if you look at Dane Reynolds, um, some of his YouTube stuff, or he's really good at that. And he, I was surfing at Macaroni's out there with him. It was unreal. It was just me and a mate. Dane Reynolds, Noah Dean, and Kalohe and Dino. So being a coach and surfing with those guys for six hours on the, one of the best waves in the world, it was only it was five foot, four to five foot. And just watching that, yeah, the lift. They were doing, Dane Reynolds does it amazing. Like he'll just read it and he'll just do that lift up and then he goes, all right, I'm going to drop to the bottom or I'm going to go high into a floater or I'm going to do a crazy aerial. So that creates time. You know, it gives you space and time on the wave. Yeah. It also uh, allows you to beat those sections you might not think that you could make as well, I, th I feel. Yeah, definitely. And those guys, because they've done it so many times, they actually know they're going to make it. Whereas someone who's th maybe on their first day at that spot would look and go, oh, I'm not going to make that section. Whereas those pros can have surfed so much in their life and know how to make a section and it, they just do it. It's like second nature. So that's just coming back to as well like trusting yourself surfing as much as you can and just trying new things going I remember the first time when I was 18 I went to G land and I looked it was probably 8 to 10 foot and I looked down and there was like a wall that went for about half a kilometre <laughs> and it looked like a close out and I thought oh, well, I'm just going to pump anyway and see what happens I was on my 6 foot 9 and just pumped and pumped and then bang you're on the wave and you made through all these sections and you're like wow but my brain was telling me, no, 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 you're going to close out because I never, I grew up in Sydney and looking at an eight to 10 foot wall that went all the way down, down the reef. And then by doing that and then doing that for the next month, now it's no drama when you look down the line and you see a section, it's like, oh yeah, I can make that if I do these things, you know, if I pump and lift and go as hard as I can. And um, yeah, it's just, just putting yourself in those those scenarios that's what's good like you're surfing different waves around northern beaches different reef breaks same as myself you try to surf different reefs and different waves um it's pretty cool at long reef and a lot of waves on northern beaches so many different slabs around there's beaches and throwing yourself into slabs is really cool because it teaches you you have to have a fast pop-up you've got to be in you've got to take off under the lip otherwise you're going to go over the falls or <laughs> not make the takeoff so that kind of you look at mark matthews what he's doing at ours and he's been training himself you know like by doing it repetition 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 at ours then he goes and surfs the right he surfs all these other waves in the world and he can do it because he's done it at his local break which is a heavy break whereas um if he just surfed maribra beach you know the beachy um i guarantee he wouldn't be as good at his as surfing slabs but all these mates who just surf slabs with him are mental. They surf ship sterns, they paddle into ship sterns. So that's a training tool as well, going trying to surf short, sucky waves. And even though the wave might, some of the waves might not be top quality, but some will. So on their day, they can be the best like, on the northern beaches, but it's teaching you how to surf a slab. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and what we don't realise is that like Mark Matthews and, and Kelly Slater and all those good surfers, they're, they're, just, they're just human and... Yeah, and we don't see the footage. Well, we don't often see the footage of all their mistakes and all their, you know, all their closeout barrels. We only see the yeah. highlights. Um, but there's a lot of work and a lot of failures that have gone behind that. For sure. And it's all worth it, you know. It's. And that's that's what I think too. Um, I've talked about a lot of this with a lot of coaches and other surfers. You look at Kelly Slater and C.J. Hobgood and his brother, and also the Lopez brothers, 
they're all from Florida where it's tiny waves, you know, consistently one to two foot. They do get good waves, but it's, you know, consistently small. Of course, those guys can paddle in hard, generate speed hard. You put them in chopu, they go berserk. They put them in pipe, they go berserk because they can generate speed. So when they, you can generate speed on a one foot wave when you're in a barrel at 10 foot backdoor pipe and you're 10 foot back in it and you need to get out, you can pump. And I think those guys, of course, they've surfed all those small waves and they go over there, obviously, like we're talk you were talking about before, and they they've obviously would have got smashed a lot of times and then eventually started getting in the groove and finding how to surf those waves. But I'd guarantee that paddle on, pop up, and the generation of speed would have helped them. Yeah, I'll, I'll find it. We'll get a video of some some good surfers surfing some smaller waves, and I'll put that in the show notes as well. Yeah. Um, rather than just watching s good surfers yeah. uh, surf six foot waves all the time, it's n not relevant for a lot of surfers. So yeah, exactly. You can really look at the at the way they approach those tiny little waves. And I mean, you wa even, even Tom Carroll at fifty, watching him surf oh, yeah. tiny little waves and he just rips. ripping them to shreds at fifty years old. It's so amazing. Yeah. He, he surfs those little tiny waves faster than tw these li <laughs> nineteen year old yeah. kids out there. Yeah, it's incredible. So yeah. it can be done, for sure. Definitely. He's got a. Uh, uh, he told me once that uh, he he used to go drive down to um, drive drive down to Bondi. Yeah. And drive so away from the northern beaches down to Bondi to surf the smallest, fattest runner. I know. And just learn how to to find speed from generate it. generate speed. And he also used to surf South Bungan as well. And because it's a really, it's a close out, like when it's crap, Bungan can get good. But uh, he was telling me they'd surf South Bungan and he had to just get two turns in on it. It's usually mostly a one turn wave. But, and that was when the world title used to finish in Sydney, not at Pipe. Yep. So that was, you know, when it was at Pipe, they'd train for Pipe. And that's where a lot of surfers, like Tom was smart. He knew that the world tour that year would be finished around in Sydney. So he trained in Bondi and at Bungan when it was crap, and he'd go six-hour surfs, six-hour sessions. No one remembers. Everyone remembers Tom Carroll as the, the pipe master, you know, and a charger, which he is. He's one of the best in the world still, but um, he gen learned how, like what you were talking about, how to generate speed fast, and that's what you need for all, everything, <laughs> for one foot, two foot, ten foot. Yeah, it, it teaches it to, to really look at the details of the waves, like the wave, yeah. the waves on the waves. Yeah, little ribs in the waves. Um, yeah. You know, to go high, go low. Which is, is a skill you also need to ride big waves, right? Yeah, there's certain double ups, and when you start surfing slabs, you got to go high road and then down to low road, go underneath the the, the double up and then come back up high. There's all sorts of stuff you got to look at. <laughs> So how would, it, let's say an intermediate surfer out or even a self-taught experienced surfer looking to take their surfing to the next level, how do they get hold of you or one of your coaches? Yeah, through, um, basically just go to the Manly Surf School website and you can email Manly Surf School website or you can, the advanced guys, you can even call me. Um, my no phone number is 0418 717 313. I'll just go to the website or High Performance Surf Centre or highperformancesurfcoaching.com.au. It's got all the all the times for the gym in here with Mike and Jezza run, and also the Manly Surf School website. Um, we're pretty easy um, easy guys to talk to. We love surfing. We love training people. And yeah, we're we're starting to do stuff as well, like doing trips overseas as well, and helping people when they go overseas. So it's pretty cool um, going overseas and surfing the best waves and surfing your brains out and getting coached as well. Yeah, I'll put uh, links to all that <laughs> stuff in the show notes so yeah, cool. folks can go on the, online and uh, get links to the website and things. Uh, and I, just, I can't recommend surf coaching enough. I mean, as a self-taught surfer myself, it's sort of you're just not aware of all those tiny little things you do wrong. Those little habits that are ingrained, and mm. it's reasonably easy to to change it's them. It's easy to change because we're vis surf. I mean, pretty much like anything you do, you need to do it. And you need to see it and need to feel it. Like any anything, like from in the gym or martial arts, surfing, golf. But when you see your movement and go, ah, oh, right, that's where I'm putting that. You keep telling me to put my f my front arm, open up my shoulders. Yeah, I'm not doing it, am I? And then you see it and you go, oh, now I know. So yeah, visual visual is amazing, and you can keep it. And 
a lot of the kids are getting so good so quick that we coach because every week they're getting videoed they're looking at the videos we give them the video and they edit it themselves so they're actually watching over and over and over and over their their, their techniques so they, they're getting these really cool styles going on. Yeah, and then they're coming in here uh, and sk and practicing that technique on the skate ramp, which allows that repetition of yeah of movement and technique. Um, it's yeah, it's it's phenomenal the way they're progressing. Yeah, the little Kobe that you coach, he's he's gone berserk. He's only ten, <laughs> doing aerials at ten. And for for folks out there listening, the interview is is at the moment taking place in uh, one of Matt's new projects, which is the High Performance Surf Center here in Sydney, which is a gym that's been set up for surfers. And to call it a gym is not really correct. It's more of a training facility. Yeah. Uh, you don't see, there's only one treadmill here for warm-ups. <laughs> um, and we've got, we got a skate ramp, an Olympic trampoline. Uh, we've got rings, gymnastic-style rings. We've got a sled. We've got kettlebells, Olympic lifting, club bells. Uh, the list goes on. There's just heaps of little fun toys uh, and top-level coaches. Uh, working with surf coaches to really take surfers to the next level. So there's also there's coaching and there's there's training, and I think combining the two together is is the best way to go. Yeah, and it's way better. I know myself. I used to go to the gym on my own and just lift weights and do movements, and didn't really wasn't doing it correctly or properly. And now doing a actual class, like we do a class every night, five thirty to six thirty Monday to to Thursday, and eight o'clock on a Saturday, and having Mike and Gerard actually telling you when you're doing the movement, okay, that's you need to tweak it that way to make it better, you know, with your squat or whatever, your lunge or any kind of movement related to surfing. And, yeah, it's you're learning as well. So you're not you're actually getting fit and you're getting endurance and you're getting strength, but you're actually learning techniques. Like now I'm stoked I'm learning how to do kettlebells. Yeah. Whereas before I was doing, I, got a, I bought a kettlebell like I did, uh, down at the shop, got my little book and tried to do it but i was doing everything wrong i know everything i was doing wrong now until i'm training with you because you've done you know years and years of olympic lifting so you know how to do the correct movement and um learning that it's actually fun because we learn the techniques of how to do everything perfect at and then you incorporate it into a training class and then a endurance it's kind of set up 45 seconds to a minute on each exercise and, and then so you're getting all that cardio as well so you're getting cardio so when you go out the surf you can paddle fast you can go out for 30 minutes and go nuts and not be tired and your body feels good too and usually, usually after the training you don't you you know next day you, you can surf yeah yeah it's we're not going crazy we're not going to try and here. hurt ourselves yeah <laughs> yeah so that's the idea and you got we've got guys here that are we've got some 50 year old 60 year old guys training here and we've got kids you know eight year olds but you know obviously we have a kids class and adults class but it's not people think, oh, yeah, you're going to come here and train and get hurt. It's the diff it's totally different. We're doing stuff that's actually beneficial. So some of the stuff is like strength training mixed with yoga ex exercises. So my shoulders, Mike's trying to open up my shoulders after after doing 30 years of surfing. My shoulders are pretty tight. So now I'm trying to open them up and keep strong, but like having more range of motion. Same as you're seeing people at the moment getting hip operations. Yeah, I'm getting my hips like looser now and stronger so i don't hopefully don't, don't go to i don't need to go down that route because i'm using my body in the right way so it's cool trying to get younger fitter stronger <laughs> it's fun yeah stay young well i'll put a link to the website for the facility here as yep. well in the show notes and anyone that wants to come along you can come and do a, a trial class yeah free trial try it out yeah come check it out come meet the people here as well before we go, uh, we could talk about we could talk for hours, uh, <laughs> and maybe we'll do another another interview down yep. the road. But um, it's got uh, your favourite four four questions. What's your favourite board at the moment? I'm riding a Rook 15 Epoxy 59 by Channel Islands. It's really good. Um, it's only 24.4 litres. I've gone down after all the training. Now I can paddle better, so I can actually ride a thinner board. So I'm loving that thing, um, especially Epoxy. It's nice and light. I can ride it in all conditions. Put some big fins in it. Put some, um, put the Mick Fanning large in it. So small board, big fins. That's what I've been working a lot, and that's what Tom Carroll's been working on as well, and Hedgy. And that's been, yeah, it's been fun. So you've like a grommet. It's good having a new, a good board. That's a big tip too. Just get a board that you love and, and just surf it to the death. 
<laughs> yeah, okay, so uh, favorite surf vid? Oh, probably Momentum. Yeah, the music and the surfing and just seeing all these guys just come, Kelly Slater and all those guys just come out of the blocks out of nowhere doing aerials, just going, wow. And probably a second of that would be Wave Warriors. That was pretty cool. <laughs> favorite surfer? Favorite surfer, wow. Um, I would just say Kelly Slater because he's just can do everything he can do airs he can ride big barrels and, and he's an inspiration to all us older guys yeah. <laughs> us older guys and he he's a grommet yeah it's good to see that he's still charged up and firing yeah, yeah. still getting better getting better he's a freak and you know I, I'm Mick Fanning close second yeah yeah what's your favourite pre-surf song or album oh it's yeah there's there's a few um, I've been going Guns N' Roses lately. Yeah. Night Train. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Old school. Old school. All right. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Thanks, mate. Thanks, Matt. All right. Thanks, Mike. We'll That's talk good. soon. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to the Surf Mastery Podcast. Again, I'm your host, Michael Frampton. Make sure you subscribe so you can keep up to date with the latest interviews. Please share with your friends. Check us out uh, on Facebook at uh, Surf Mastery Surf. And if you're on iTunes, please go and give us a little rating. That'd be awesome. Until next time, keep surfing.